he tells me, I don't know. It's like while I'm while I'm looking at you, I just see you. You just look like clean. Wow. Like I, I can't make sense of it. That's the only word that's coming to my head right now is you look clean. Like yesterday you didn't look like this. Today you look different. I can't make yeah. sense of it. You know, and it wasn't the wardrobe. It wasn't anything. You know, he was literally seeing me afresh. You mm -hmm. know, that fresh start. You know, he was yeah. seeing that that God just washed away the past. Wow. You know, and it was I was I was clean, fresh, new, mm -hmm. right then and there from the point I made that decision. Welcome to the Virtual Bridge Podcast with Miguel and Michelle. Thanks for tuning in. It's always a pleasure to be of service to you wherever you may be. And it's wonderful that we get to connect by means of this Virtual Bridge Podcast to remind you that the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news because God loves you. He is for you. Keep God first place. Yes, and today we have a very special guest, a man of God, who we're excited for you guys to listen to and testify God's goodness. Um, the footsteps of the righteous are ordained by the Lord, and we're just so excited. Welcome, Will. Amen. Glory to God. I'm happy to be here. Amen. 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 Yes, we are amen. also excited, and, and I love that piece of scripture. And, you know, we, we, we're going to be honest here, and we had a conversation before recording this, and, you know, it, it's just a, a time for us to fellowship. And, and Will, we, we were looking for an introduction, and, and, and I, I feel like the Holy Spirit just, just spoke through him and said, the footsteps of the righteous are ordained by the Lord. And that's why I'm here. And I'm just like, come on, somebody. I was like, yes, that's Amen. exactly why Will is here. Yes, and we met Will. Um, we have we had another guest, Letitia, that was on here. Mm -hmm. So that Will is her mentor. And and our, our guest, Letitia, was like, he's a powerful man of God. You guys have to have him on. And yeah. we're so excited, just as she is. So before we start sharing um, the goodness of the Lord and, and part of your testimony, and, and just what, how the Lord is using you now, we want to honor the Lord right now with a Amen. piece of, of, of scripture and prayer. And we want to say um, the Lord's prayer. So if, if anyone, th th for those that are listening right now, you guys could go ahead and say it with us. It's our Father, and it says like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And also, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the glory, and the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Will, thanks for being here again. Amen. We're super excited. Go ahead and let the listeners know who you are and uh, what the Lord has done in your life. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, I just submitted myself to just serve the Lord. You know, um, I'm a brother in Christ, you know, Amen. I'm not, you know, I'm not big on, you know, the title thing and, you know, what the Lord has made me, the Lord has made me. Amen. Amen. And what he's done for me, <laughs> Lord, he's done so much. Mm -hmm. All I can tell you is I shouldn't be here, but I am. <laughs> wow. That's powerful. I can't, I, I lost count of the amount of times that the enemy has tried to take me out. So wow. mm -hmm. the Lord has done much and is doing much mm -hmm. to the present day. Yeah. All to his glory. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's powerful. Can yes. you share with us one of those areas where you mentioned that, you know, I, I shouldn't be here. Um, is that an area where um, you're talking about like maybe like, Death, they, yes. where you were close to that. Can you talk a little bit about that? I I had a heart condition when I was a teenager, mm. and you know, that that put me very very close to the edge, because uh, when I was on the table, I could actually see myself fading out, like I was losing it, wow. mm. and they had to rush me and pump me with IV and and give me a a steroid medication, an accelerated steroid medic medication to mm -hmm. reduce the inflammation and the swelling because wow. I had a uh, fluid building up around my heart and it was basically literally crushing it in my chest. Wow. And um, so pretty much it was uh, a tough situation where I was basically pretty close to that point right there. Wow. It's like in me, I just knew I was like, I, I, I really felt it like I was going and I was just like, all right, God, I guess this is it. I'm going at 17, 17 <laughs> you know, wow. yeah. and 
I just remember just saying to the Lord, I was just like, all right, Lord, here I am. I just put you, I put myself in your hands. Mm -hmm. You know, if this was, you know, if this was it, you know, and, and I fulfilled my days, then so be it, Lord. Mm -hmm. And then after that, my heart rate just started calming down. Mm -hmm. You know, it just shot up from like 80 beats to 156 beats in a matter of seconds. Wow. You know, and then all of a sudden, after I said that in my heart, it just started calming down. Mm. And then everything just started getting still while I was mm. watching everything. It almost felt like a movie, like how you see the doctors rushing you in. Mm -hmm. You know, you see everybody running around you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that was definitely uh, a sure encounter that the enemy was trying to take me out in that time. I have a question. Did you grow up in, in knowing the faith and having a relationship with God, or did that come after? Yes, I was actually born and raised in church. Um, the understanding of relationship with God that I have now, I definitely didn't have growing up. Mm -hmm. You know, it was later in my years that I, I truly, truly came to the understanding of what true relationship with God really is, is like. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Can we talk about that a little bit? Cause I, I think that's an area where a lot of people, um, really don't understand. Mm -hmm. Of like really, really having a relationship with the Lord because I feel like when, and and it, it's powerful what you shared, um, because your time was not done. So it's like it's it has it had to be the Lord's will, um, and and I think it's powerful that you know us Christians we pray for no premature death or anything so we could fulfill everything that the Lord has called us to do, and that that's why the Lord, you know, has has kept you alive because you have a purpose to fulfill here in in this earth, Amen. and and that's that's that was my question on on asking you of um, having that relationship with the Lord. So when you overcame that at 17, um, how did it look for you where you were like, okay, the Lord kept me alive. He has a purpose for me. How did you start building that, that stronger personal relationship with him? Because I could only imagine maybe you, ha you had to get rid of some stuff, some friends, or how did that look for you? Um, at that age, I really, really didn't understand. Like I... I knew I had like the basic understanding, oh man, the Lord saved me. You mm -hmm. know, it was God that saved me. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like, I just continued, you know, church as usual, mm -hmm. you know, and it was just, it had just became like a testimony. Yeah, God saved me from death, mm -hmm. you know? <clears throat> I really didn't uh, understand the value and uh, destiny purpose, mm -hmm. you know? that wasn't in the forefront of my mind, you know, at mm -hmm. that age. So in time, I grew to uh, understand scripture more. You know, I got more serious over the years and, you know, uh, my early 20s. Um, after that, life circumstances, you know, caused me to drift away, mm -hmm. you know, not, not of my own will of, you know, wanting to drift away is I didn't know how to manage circumstance and life while maintaining relationship. And so I drifted away, you know, and got caught up with the, you know, the affairs of life, you know, and I just lost it. Mm -hmm. You know, I lost it. You know, my heart would, you know, desire and want to, you know, get back, you know, serious with God. But it was just life was just so intense and so hectic that I just couldn't, I couldn't find myself to, 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 to come back, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And then life was just so busy. I allowed, I allowed the busyness of life get to me, you know, working so much and till finally one day, you know, I was speaking with a coworker and, you know, uh, the Lord had mercy and was, you know, using me to, you know, help him understand, you know, the word with the little that I knew at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, he just told me, dude, you know, why don't you just get serious with God again? Why don't you just do it? And that kind of hit me. And I was just like, you're right. Yeah. You're right. It was like, you know, one of those epiphany moments, like, mm -hmm. you're, you're right. I need to just do it. You know, I just need to make the decision. You know, and just allow God to be God, mm -hmm. you know. And that same night, I went home and I said, God, 
I'm at the end of my rope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've been trying so hard to do it, and I just can't do it by I yourself can't. anymore. I can't. And I said, no more wasting time. I wasted so many years of my life up to that point. And I just said, God, here I am. I'm surrendering everything, and I'm just going to do the the basics of what I know already that I should be doing. Mm-hmm. And I said, all right, here we go, God. Let's do it. We're starting afresh. Wow. Mm-hmm. And the next day, when I met my coworker again, he looked at me, and he was like, Dude, what did you do? And I was just like, what do you mean, what did I do? <laughs> and he was like, you look different. I'm <laughs> like, how? Like, how? You know, I hadn't shaven yet. I was so scruffy. My beard was long, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, dude, what do you mean I look clean? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I'm like, okay, make sense out of it, please. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And um, he tells me, I don't know. It's like... While I'm while I'm looking at you, I just see you. You just look like clean. Mm. Wow. Like I, I can't make sense of it. That's the only word that's coming to my head right now is you look clean. Like yesterday you didn't look like this. Today you look different. I can't make yeah. sense of it. You know, and it wasn't the wardrobe. It wasn't anything. You know, he was literally seeing me afresh. You mm-hmm. know, that fresh start. You know, he was yeah. seeing that. That God just washed away the past. Wow. You know, and it was, I was, I was clean, fresh, new, mm-hmm. right then and there from the point I made that decision. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's powerful. You just mentioned uh-huh. something very powerful. You had to confess it, right? And I, I think it's powerful how the Lord even used your friend. You were discipling him mm-hmm. and he discipled you. <laughs> he was like, hey, Amen. Like, why don't you just go back to your father yeah. in heaven? I think that's powerful mm-hmm. how the Lord could use anyone too, right? Right. And I think the Lord, he, well, just based on what you're sharing, like the Lord knew that you were going to do all of his will because right. you mentioned yeah. that, that you, you were sharing with your friend with the little that you knew at that time right. and you were still being obedient with that, which I think it's powerful. And mm-hmm. for the listeners to know that, that, Hey, you don't have to know everything, but right. just start with, you know, right now, be obedient right. with that and just watch with the Lord. The Lord, his word says that he will restore the years of your life. Amen. So I think that's powerful. What started happening when the Holy Spirit started filling you up? From, from that time, I started noticing. It, it was a while. You know, this is, this is something very important for, for listeners to hear this carefully. Mm-hmm. You know, because everybody's walk is different in the sense of how God processes you. Mm-hmm. Because everybody's in different stages. Everybody has uh, different ways of being and, and, and different uh, ways of thinking and and seeing yeah. so God deals with you according to how you are so he knows what's going to work for you specifically mm-hmm. so he knows what I'm doing with you I can't do with him I can't do with her right. you know so he he tailors uh his process with you specifically for you mm-hmm. so he knew with me because I already had some foundation and understanding and I knew enough to know that I know I have to remain, you know, if, if something's going to come out of this, you know, and God's going to do what he's going to do with me, I have to stay and I yes. have to, however long it's going to take, mm-hmm. I have to let God process me. Amen. Mm. And yes. I think it was probably about a good six to eight months of just trying to give God my all, Mm -hmm. you know, making sure I prayed, I read my Bible, you know, I fasted, you know, and I, and, and I was intentional in seeking the face of God, you know, seeking his will and walking it out. You know, I knew I needed to grow in understanding. I searched the scriptures, you know, to gain understanding, you know, as the word of God says, study to show thyself approved unto God and man. And so I, I knew the basics of that. So I was like, all right, if I'm going to be what you called me to be, then I, I really need to, you know, get into the word heavy, yeah. Yeah. you know, because when I was 19 years old, uh, a man of God, a visitor came to my church and he, in the middle of his sermon, he just stopped and he walked down from the pulpit. I was sitting in the back and then he puts his hands on my shoulder and says, I, the Lord said that he called you to be a prophet. Wow. Come on. And I was just like in shock. This was when I was 19. I was just like, 
told me to be a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Yeah. And so I was just like, okay, amen, glory to God. Yeah. So that has stayed in the back of my head, you know, mm-hmm. all those years. And I just never, you know, acted on it, you know. But coming to the later stages of my life when I was going through this process and I surrendered all, you know, I went back to that and I was just like, all right, God, you know, you spoke this word over me, so let's walk it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so in the process of of going through that, you know, I I didn't experience anything. I wasn't sensing manifestation, you know. It was just like every day sacrificing and sacrificing and sacrificing and pressing through and pressing through and pressing through. Until finally one day I just got like a little piece of revelation when I was listening to the word of God. And I was just like, thank you, Jesus. I was like, it's tiny. You know, it's a little bit, but thank you, Jesus. Mm. And then from there, it just started growing and growing and growing. And I started noticing that that revelation just started getting deeper and deeper mm. and deeper. And then it just started kind of like snowballing, mm-hmm. you know. And and I started noticing... Uh, my understanding expanded a lot, you know, and I knew it was the grace of God on my life. I was just like, Amen. you know, the the studying and the understanding that I was gaining was was not this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this yeah. was surely the Holy Spirit, you know. Amen. And one day, finally, I had a dream, and the Holy Spirit showed me in a dream uh, that He was going to. Oh, sorry about that. No, you're it's good. Okay. You're good. He showed me, uh a dream. I was in a hospital waiting room. And I was with, you know, people, church members from my old church. And one of the youth looked at me and said, you're going to have triplets. And I said, you know, I had enough understanding by then to know that triplets didn't mean physical babies. Mm -hmm. I knew it was something God was birthing in the spirit, you know. Mm -hmm. And then that night I knew it was just like there was an urgency in my spirit, man. And I just knew. I said, all right, God, whatever it is, I need to know this now. I need to know what you're saying to me right now. And that night, that day was a horrible day. Horrible when I tell you. I, I was exhausted, tired, drained. I think I got home so late. I, I, I literally dropped everything and I said, Lord God, I'm not giving up. I know you need to, you need me, whatever it is, I need to know what you need me to know now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know you put this in me to know now. And I started praying and praying and praying and praying. I was praying for hours. Nothing was happening. I got so exhausted that I just dropped to my knees in exhaustion because I was already tired from the day. Mm-hmm. And nothing. And then I just got so exhausted and tired. I, I, I literally was just sitting there on the floor and then just dropped down and just fell asleep. And then I woke up and I probably start, I started praying again. And it lasted maybe about six minutes. And then I fell out again. And in that six minutes, I was just like, God, I'm so sorry. I felt like I failed, you know. And I was just like, God, I'm so sorry. Like, I, I, I gave it all I had, you know. Mm-hmm. And I fell asleep. And in that dream, I had a dream. When I fell asleep, I had a dream. And I saw uh, the pastor of a woman of God that, you know, I learned a lot from. Uh, Her name is Juanita Bynum. And I saw her pastor in the dream. And he was, you know, in formal attire. And he was pouring uh, in a pitcher. He was pouring uh, in a cup. He was pouring oil from a pitcher. Mm -hmm. And I saw it repeat three times. And while I was repeating, I heard he's pouring oil. And then immediately right after that, I woke up and I knew I was just like, I, I, I was, it was kind of funny because I had understanding of the anointing. And when I woke up, I woke up, you know, with the witness of the Holy Spirit that this is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And I woke up and I was just like, God just anointed me. Like, yeah, it wasn't yeah. like a, you know, like how, you know, men of God, you know, they're like, oh, you know, the unction of the Holy Spirit is upon you. It was kind of almost comical because I was just woke up. I was just like, I'm anointed. God just anointed me. I'm anointed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, oh. and I was just like, okay, what do I do now? <laughs> yeah. What's the next yeah. step? <laughs> you know, I, I really didn't know what to do. I was just like, okay, God, you anointed me. Now what? <laughs> yeah. So... In that week, it was about two weeks later, 
Benny Hinn was preaching a series of the anointing, right? The three different stages of how God anointed David uh, to kill Goliath. Then he anointed him, you know, to be king over Judah and then the whole nation. And later on, the Lord revealed to me that that was symbolic of the process of the anointing. And when we receive Christ and we're baptized with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, Amen. all three, the stages of anointing are all upon you Amen. because it is the totality of the Holy Spirit, that dominion that God gave us. Amen. So uh, in the book of Acts, it says, you know, when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power, right? Amen. And so then I finally understood what the Lord really did and, you know, what he did. And from then on, it was just like I was just on fire in the sense like I just wanted to do more. I wanted to to exercise what God gave me, you Amen. know, and I was just letting God, whoever wanted to hear the word of God, I was just like, sure, no problem. Amen. They're like, listen, I don't want to hold you up. I'm like, you're not holding me up. I'm letting the Holy Spirit <laughs> Amen. flow. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Glory to God, man. Amen. That's powerful. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That hunger and that fire Amen. that you said yes. was upon you. That's what, what were some of those stuff that were holding you back? I want to take it back oh. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because for that listener that's saying, well, I'm just curious, like, um, because I know there's there's a lot of people that are dealing with a lot of strongholds. Mm -hmm. um, it could be like a poor mentality right. or it could be anxiety, depression or even like pornography or right. stuff like that that people really don't want to talk about. Right. And I think that's where people say, well, if I fall back into temptation, oh, now the Lord can't use me. Right. And But no, it's like I think we should run to the Lord right. mm -hmm. and repent and ask for forgiveness. Right. So. If, if you could just share a little bit of, of like some of the stuff that you had to let go of before that happened, before those that dream, that revelation from the Lord, that anointing, all of that happened. Like what what really, because you, you did mention you just had to keep pressing on, you're pressing on. Mm -hmm. and, and like, what was that? What, what did you have to let go of? The, the pressing on was the sacrificing of, the battling through the exhaustion of the of the flesh, you know, mm -hmm. being tired, you know, because okay. I was working so much, you know, fighting to find every little bit of time to give God, you know, because mm. the Bible says if you're faithful and little, he'll give you much. Yeah. You know, and I know I needed, I knew I needed a lot more time than I had to give God. Yeah. And I said, God, uh, I don't have much. Like the woman that gave the three mites and God said, you know, she gave more than everybody else that gave, mm -hmm. you know, a mm -hmm. lot of money. Yeah. And I said, Lord God, I I'm giving you my three mites. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm giving you the little bit that I have. And, and I pressed every single day through exhaustion, feeling tired, feeling so drained, falling asleep, praying. Mm -hmm. You know, from being so tired, you know, making the sacrifice to make sure no matter how exhausted I was mm -hmm. that I, I made sure I got on my knees and pray. If I lasted five minutes and fell asleep, then I was going to give God those five minutes and fall asleep on my mm -hmm. knees praying. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was enduring the sacrifice. Yeah. One thing that the Lord showed me, um, feel free to, uh, you know. Stop me at any point because it's 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 a whole long process, man. <laughs> You're good, brother. Go ahead. Um, in, in that process, the Lord, uh, I was asking the Lord. I was like, God, how did these men of God produce the results that they produced? Mm. You know, in the Bible, and some men of God today. Uh, there are some generals like uh, Smith Wigglesworth. You know who a lot of people know now. Uh, he was a very, very powerful man of God, raised 23 people from the dead, you know, on record. This this man would literally go uh, into the funeral while everybody's sitting having service and the body's there. He would pick up the body from the casket and put it against the wall and tell it to live. Wow. You know, this, this was a very powerful man of God, mm -hmm. you know, and there, you know, there's John G. Lake, who's another man of God during a... Uh, I think it was the Ebola virus, you know, where people were saying you couldn't even touch the bodies, that they couldn't clean up the bodies in the in the uh, the place wherever it was. And he said, I'm going to go help. Mm -hmm. And they said, listen, you know, if you touch these people, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. You know, they're infected. And he said, no, I'm not going to die. 
the infection is going to die. Mm, that's powerful. And yeah. they were like, okay, like basically like who does this guy think he is, you know? Yeah. And he said, all right, I'll prove it. Get a sample of the virus and I'll put it in my hand. So they said, all right, this is at your own risk, basically, you know? Mm -hmm. And so he went with them to a lab and they took a sample of the virus and put it in his hand and put it under a microscope. And they literally watched the virus die under the microscope wow. in the palm of his hand. Wow. Literally, you know? So uh, the generals of, of the Bible, there are generals in this day and age that, you know, are walking, you know, in the power of God to great degrees. Mm -hmm. And I asked the Lord, I said, God, there's not a lot of people, you know, walking in this degree of power, but there are. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, you know, I said yes to you not to walk a little bit of the Bible. Mm -hmm. I said yes to you to do your will. Yeah. And and your will is all of your word, not a part of your word or mm -hmm. some of your word or some degree of your word. It's all of it. Amen. Yeah. And so I said, all right, God, let's get this show on the road. Let's do this. How do I do this now? Mm -hmm. And then I'll never forget in that moment when I was asking the Lord, I was just like, how did they do it? He said these words. If you want to produce what they produced, you have to do in like manner what they did. That's what he told me. And I started comparing their lives to, so sorry. You're good. I started comparing their lives to the men of God in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I noticed the pattern of much hours of prayer, mm -hmm. you know, deep uh, hours of study. Smith Wigglesworth, Ms. Smith Wigglesworth would spend... 30 minutes praying and then 30 minutes reading the Bible. 30 minutes praying and reading the Bible. If he wasn't doing anything else, this was his life. Yeah. Mm. He was literally, this is what he was doing. Not often would he pray a whole bunch of hours, but this was his consistent pattern throughout every single day. Mm -hmm. If he wasn't working or he wasn't preaching or he wasn't doing anything else, he would be praying for 30 minutes and then read the Bible for 30 minutes. Pray for 30 minutes read the Bible for 30 minutes, wow. mm. you know, um, there's other men of God that have, you know, prayed for hours and hours, you know, they dedicated their lives so deeply and, you know, comparing to the pattern of the lives of the men, of the men in the Bible, let's say like Elijah, for example, Yes. everything he did was on the mountain, you know, when mm -hmm. he called down fire, it was on the mountain yeah. when he slew the 850 prophets, mm -hmm. it was on the mountain. And the mountain is symbolic of spiritual mm -hmm. height. It's mm -hmm. symbolic of the place of intimacy with God. Mm -hmm. You know, that closeness. And if you look at the patterns, you know, now our mountain is in Christ Jesus. Because the Bible mm -hmm. says, we are hid in Christ. And you have come unto Mount Zion, unto an innumerable number of angels, Amen. to the spirits of just men made perfect. So this mount is in Christ, and we are in Christ. And spiritually, we ascend in Christ, the mountain mm -hmm. of the Lord. Amen. So symbolically, in prayer, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we ascend spiritually in prayer. Because the Bible says that the Old Testament is a shadow of the new. So it's basically kind of like giving you the uh, imagery, so to speak, or to give you a visual example of what you do symbolically, mm -hmm. you know, you ascend spiritually in prayer and the same pattern in scripture is the same pattern I saw in these people's lives. Amen. I, I truly do believe what you're saying. And, and I, I love the example of Elijah because he, he was a human just like you and me. And he told, he told Ahab, I believe, yes. go back told him seven times, go back and pray because like Elijah, he heard, and, and it, it just reminds me of like, like the Lord is calling you to be a prophet. And like Elijah was saying, I hear the sound of heavy rain. No one believed mm -hmm. him. Right. Mm -hmm. But he, he was prophesying. He was confessing it. Right. And he would also implement prayer. And through that, the rain came. Right. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I do, when we have seen the prayer, the power of prayer, prayer. Um, Michelle has, met, has seen that herself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, thanks for sharing that. That's, yeah. that's very powerful right there. What is that something we mentioned prophesying? 
have have you been practicing that? Like, what what areas in ministry are you doing now? Like, uh, we also um, have a feeling, and and, and uh, uh, sorry, I'm getting nervous right here. Uh, what about like deliverance ministries? Mm -hmm. Like, is that an area where you're practicing as well? Every day, okay. every day, uh, because deliverance starts in the mind. Okay. You know, it first started on the cross. Yes. And what manifests what was done on the cross mm -hmm. is actually the conditioning of the mind. That's what the Bible says, be ye renewed in the mind yes. with the word of God. Because there are two things that believers struggle with. One is identity and yeah. the second is consciousness. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't know who they are, which is why they allow the devil to do what they do, mm -hmm. what he does. And those that do, you know, there are those that do, but they lack the consciousness of who they are. Mm -hmm. So they, ha they don't have the confidence in who they are in Christ Jesus. Right. And that's what produces the struggle of dealing uh, with demonic forces troubling their lives. Yeah. Because it all starts there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. How would you... And that's that's powerful in itself to know the difference between um, the um, conscious part right. and your identity. Yeah. And I kind of want to take it back to like the listeners, men of God, women of God that are tuning in. Like, how do they come to that place of knowing their identity and knowing? I know that it's within the practice of um, reading your word through right. revelation, um, but how like. I don't know. I feel like it's harder for those that are new and coming in and into Christianity and building that relationship with God, like like the guidance, right? right. Like how did they get there? Like what, right. what are some, I don't know, tips or tools that you can share that they can implement at home right. to get there? Right. Um, the scripture says, he that is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even mm -hmm. our faith. Uh, that scripture in some cases, is misunderstood because there's some rendition and some verse, versions that say, you know, he that is born of, of he that is born of God overcomes the world, uh, our faith instead of even our faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That changes the context yeah. because the beginning of that portion of the text is telling you how you overcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the latter portion of the text, it's contradicting it, the, those versions are contradicting it because now it's saying your faith is what, over, what overcomes. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But the beginning of the text is telling you from out of the gate that it is your birth in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. that you overcome. Amen. And as you read, it says, even our faith. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So you overcome first by your birth. You have already overcome because Jesus overcame everything at the mm -hmm. cross. Yes, amen. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made an open show of the devil, mm -hmm. yeah. triumphing over them at the, on the cross. Yeah. Yes, amen. So, um, oh, I'm so sorry. I just lost my chain of thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're good. But what I, what, I get, what I hear you say is like a lot of times we, we prophesy, like we, we're not going to pay attention to, to what the world says or what that medical report says or what the current circumstance right. We are like fighting our battles out of victory. Right. You know, we're not we're not praying for victory. We're already victorious. Exactly. Because of what you're sharing, that Jesus, he he already right. went into the pit of hell. He took the right. crown and the keys of hell, and he has he overcame death. Right. So that that's why I hear you say that that we right. we we are in a place of we're already victory. victorious. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. right. I want to go back a little bit with with like the demons and and the um Casting out demons and the deliverance ministries, because I feel this is an area that that a lot of people um, they, they like to hear about this stuff, and and not a lot of people um, really like like want to get into it, especially because I I, I shared with with uh, in a different podcast episode that I experienced deliverance myself one time, mm -hmm. and it was scary. I used to be scared of it um, because I felt when I got delivered from a demon, I, I I felt like I was having I was having like a heart attack, and I started feeling hot. It was a weird feeling for myself, but now I understand what it was. And I just, I'm going to ask you a follow-up question, but in, in the mm -hmm. Bible, uh, in the book of Luke, 
we hear of a story where Jesus, um, he cleaned a man. And he, he went into a town, and for a long time, this man um, had not worn cloth or clothing or lived in a house, but lived in the tombs. Right. And I think this is interesting what Scripture says. It says, when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell to his feet, shouting out from the top of his voice, what do you want from me, Jesus, the Son of the Most High God? I, I thought that was interesting because even demons right. know who he is. Right. Mm -hmm. Has that... Uh, that's, that's a follow-up question. Like, have you seen that happen where you you deliver someone and, like, the demon manifests and, mm -hmm. and like, starts talking to you? And, and I'm just curious about that. Right, For the right. listeners to hear that. Um, I personally haven't had that encounter yet. Okay. I haven't come across that. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I've come across, you know, people feeling, they'll, they'll have a sensation of feeling light, mm -hmm. like a weight just lifted off of them. Um. The, the the coughing, the feeling like, you know, they want to throw up, mm -hmm. you know. But as far as, like, that in itself, I have not encountered that as of yet. Yeah, I think that's that's an area where it's... I, I, I'm even scared of stuff like that, to be <laughs> honest. But I know that, that uh, the Holy Spirit overcomes all of that, you know. Amen. And I remember when I got delivered, um, remember I, I was saying, like, I, I feel like I was having a heart attack. But then out of nowhere, like you mentioned, like I felt like weight just right. got out of me. I felt peace. I right. felt so like like right. light. And I was like, whoa, like what just happened? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. but yeah. I wanted to ask within all of that, because I'm like, <laughs> well, what happens next? You know, right. you you gave your life to Christ. You were all in. He this fire was on, this hunger, revelation, anointing. Yeah. What what happened? Like, what can you tell us like? What was the next step after that for you? Like, what has God or has God done in your life once you started, like, okay, anointed, what's the next step, God? Like, what's right. next? The next process, which is what I'm currently in right now, if you notice, you know, as God processes men, on, men and women of God, one process that we all have to go through is the process of service. Mm -hmm. So as God, you know, was taking me through my process, you know, he brought me to uh, where I am now, you know, under a man of God to serve. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so before God brings you to a place, if you notice Moses, uh, he was serving someone in mm -hmm. their household, mm -hmm. right? Before God drew him to the burning bush, mm -hmm. he was in service. If you notice David, King David, before he got pulled to, God called him to, you know, slay Goliath, he was tending sheep. He was in yeah. service. Mm -hmm. Elisha, before he took the mantle of Elijah, mm -hmm. he was serving Elijah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a process that God takes us all through in the area of service, you know, yes. culturing that humility. That's why Jesus said, if you want to be the greatest in the kingdom, you would have to be the least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why Jesus was, was, you know, one of the reasons why Jesus was washing the disciples' feet yeah. Yeah. was to serve them. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Amen. Yeah. And I, I think that's another interesting story where uh, Pilate, on the other hand, in front of everyone, well, he declared, who do you guys want, Jesus or was Barnabas? Right. And, Barabbas. And, you know, Barabbas. Um, and they, they chose to, to free that, you know, prisoner. Mm -hmm. And then what did he do? He washed his hands in front right. of everyone. And I think that was being selfish. He, like Jesus painted that picture. Like he, he chose, he, Jesus came here to not to be served, but to serve. Mm -hmm. And he, he proved that on the, um, when he was washing their, their the feet, right? He was serving right. them. But then like Pilate, on the other hand, he was just like, he, he washed mm -hmm. his hands and and I feel like he 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 felt to lead others. He was in a position of power of leadership, mm -hmm. and it was like lack of leadership right there, being selfish, serving himself first, and then it's like, oh, it's on you guys. His blood is on you guys. And right. I think that was that's. I, th I think we are here to serve one another. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I I think there's another interesting um, w when you started sharing. When you started pressing in and you mentioned, you said that, that you had to remain. I think that the Holy Spirit highlighted that to me. Amen. Remain. I think that's very Amen. powerful. And Jesus did speak about that. He said, 
Um, in, in the book of John, verse 15, he said, I am the true vine. Right. And my father is a gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will you know, be even more fruitful. Right. So I think it's powerful the way you said that, like, I, I need to remain in him. And, and I feel like he has been, like, pruning some areas of your life so right. that you're, you're stepping into an, a, 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 mm. a, right. a new season and, and you're going to be bearing more fruit. And right. part of it is this podcast. Amen. This podcast is part of the fruit that you're going to be bearing, that other people are going to be able to connect and listen and, you know, and, 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 and find some, some value for them to take. And that's part of the fruit that they're taking for themselves, Amen. you know, so. What are some, if I can go back to, because I just want the listeners to hear, but mm -hmm. what yeah, are some good. generational strongholds that you have been able to break for your family, for your generation to come? Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, Every generational stronghold is broken when you come into the identity of who you truly are. Mm -hmm. Because, and this is, this is a part of understanding salvation. Mm -hmm. And this is where a lot of people uh, lose it in understanding. Because they're like, okay, I'm saved, you know, I received the life of God, you know, and I'm a Christian. You know, that's the basis of many believers' understanding. Mm -hmm. And that's why I brought up identity earlier, mm -hmm. because when you receive salvation, you are no longer the same person, although in the same body, mm -hmm. because the person that's inside is the spirit man. Mm -hmm. That is who you are. As the Bible says, he that is joined to the Lord has been made one spirit with him. Yeah. So what happens spiritually, as the Bible says, to them that believe gave he power to become sons. Mm -hmm. To them that believe. Mm -hmm. So when they believed, he gave them power to become sons. Mm -hmm. So there was a state of being in believing and then a state of becoming mm -hmm. in that. And when you receive the life of Christ, you go through a process which science calls transmutation. Mm -hmm. So giving the example of a butterfly into a caterpillar, I mean, a mm -hmm. caterpillar into, into a butterfly, mm -hmm. you know, genetically, it's become a different species. Mm -hmm. So the DNA coding is completely different. Mm -hmm. So it, it has no trace of the old anymore. Mm -hmm. It's become completely new, mm -hmm. something completely new. That's why the Bible says that we have become a new creature or a new mm -hmm. creation. Amen. The old has passed away. Amen. Behold yes. a new thing. So the person that was literally is no more. Mm -hmm. So although still being with your earthly physical family, if they're not brothers and sisters in Christ, mm -hmm. they're actually not your family anymore mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. now you are of the family of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. So everything that's in the bloodline, in the genetics of the physical DNA, you are no longer bound to mm -hmm. when you receive the life of Christ amen. because you are transmutated from what that was to what you are now in Christ. Mm -hmm. And when consciousness meets the reality of the word of God, all of it breaks. Wow. Amen. Yeah. All of it is gone. The ties of all oh, uh there's alcoholism down, you know, my bloodline, all of that is mm. severed. Yeah. Every trace of every single generational curse when a believer comes into that consciousness is completely severed. Amen. 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 Preach it, bro. Come on, somebody. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm... Sunday. I feel like we're in church right now. Come on, Amen. somebody. Glory to God. Man, that's Amen. powerful, bro. Like, you know, and, and that's, that's why we true. have this podcast because it's it's that word right there. It's from the Holy Spirit that's speaking right there. And it's an area that's going to help a lot of people. I have a yeah. follow-up question for that. But, you know, this podcast, me and Michelle, we, we're not, you know, putting ourselves like experts or anything like that. That's why... You know, sometimes with our questions, we get nervous sometimes. But I do want to say, Amen. what what can you say to to that person that's listening right now and that says, well, Will, you know what? That's an area that I'm struggling. That's an area where, you know, I, I just, if I give my life to Christ, I know that, first of all, like, 
my pastor says all the time in church that I have to be connected in church. I have to serve. Right. Um, but you know, my family members, they, every, every weekend they're drinking the barbecues and, and, you know, I go into my house, I still live with my parents and, and they're Catholics and, and they have all these statues at home. Like, well, that's an area that I really struggle with. What worse, what word of advice can you give that person? Just like a biblical encouragement to, to, uh, to help them take that step of, of, you know, just giving it all for, to the Lord. Um, first is that step, giving it all to the Lord, because a lot of people think they give it all to the Lord, but they're actually not. Mm. And the evidence will produce itself if you actually give your all to the Lord. So that's the first thing you need to, a person needs to do. They need to look inside and be real with themselves. Yeah. Am I truly giving it all to the Lord? Mm. And then after you do that and come to the place where you truly surrender it all to the Lord. You then remain in that position, mm -hmm. keeping your heart there. That's what the Bible says, mm -hmm. they that endure to the end. So it's using the word endure because there's a process that you got to go through that's not going to be very easy. Yes. So you have to stay strong. Amen. That's why in Ephesians, uh, it says, in Ephesians 6, it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord mm -hmm. and in the power of his might. Yeah. It's a direction to be strong in the process of what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Now, to be strong, you have to go through the basics. Uh, the, the, I guess, for lack of a better word, the rudiments of the faith. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget when I heard Smith Wigglesworth say this. He said, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I read my Bible out loud so I can hear the word of God come out of my mouth. Yeah, yeah, come on. <laughs> when I heard that, I was yeah, just like. That's good. Really? It's that simple. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, it my, was, my pastor does this analogy right here. <laughs> put, put the camera over here, Salo. He says, hey, you can't, you can't hear God? Look, it's, talk, <laughs> it's talking to you right now. You yeah. know? And I, that's, I think that's, that's powerful. and. Yeah. Uh, another, you know, I love John 15. John 15 for me yes. personally is like, that's what the Lord spoke to me at a personal right. level. I have this like written in my heart. It, it's from John 15, 1 all the way to 17. But I want to share with the listeners right now in John 15, uh, just another way where you could empower yourself is knowing that you did not choose Jesus. He chose you. And that's right. what it says right here. Right. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might be might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Amen. And that's an area where I'm just like, I think that's powerful because he is a generational God. And what we are leaving here on earth is a legacy. We are establishing his kingdom Amen. as it is in heaven here on earth. Amen. And, you know, with, you know for, for that person that's listening and, and struggling in those areas of really letting go of everything, it's like the Lord wants to use you and he has chosen you to be the light in your family as well. Amen. You know, because I think it's, it's we see that in church often where there's a lot of young people that, you know, especially here in L.A., where even even um, this, they say it's like a godless nation that, that mm -hmm. God is not here in, in California or in L.A., but no. I feel like, you know, there's a big revival that's going to break out here in L.A. Amen. And, and, and I think, you know, I'm getting off a topic right now, but I, I just want to emphasize in this because I know there's a lot of young people that are going to be tuning in. They're going to be listening and just knowing that, that they are chosen, that there's Amen. a reason why their circle, um, you know, they're stuck in, in, in alcoholism and Catholicism and, and serving other gods or even... In, in the new, what, what is that called? New the new age. new age era where they where they want crystals and they mm -hmm. want um, like that that evil eye, that, that right. bracelet that they, they put their trust in other things. And they're, they're all seeking peace and love, but they're seeking in the wrong places. Right. You know, so I, I think there, we have to like really let them know that there's one healer. There's one right. person that, that could really bring you peace and love. Amen. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yeah. That's powerful. And it's true because I think I can, with what you shared and, and, um, with breaking those strongholds, right. 
I, I didn't see it in that way, but no, it's, it's true. Cause when I said yes to God, I was like, I'm all in, I don't want anything. That was me breaking those generational strongholds and, and Amen. leaving that behind and yeah. not, and now doing his will, Amen. <laughs> but doing his Amen. will. Yeah. Yeah. I remember Amen. too, like the first, when I gave my life to Christ and it's just to add value to the listeners, I, I started my, like my spiritual eyes were open right off the bat. Because I, I started, just like yourself, I started getting understanding. And mm-hmm. the enemy, he manifests himself even with the people that you love. And it's not, for an, an example, it's like when I got saved, um, like that following weekend, we had a family party and my dad showed up with a, with a tequila shot, tequila mm-hmm. alcohol. He was like, here, have a shot. And I right. felt like the enemy was telling me, are you going to say no to your dad? Mm-hmm. Right. Are you going to let those feelings, like, are you really right. going to say no to your dad? You know, and, and I, I felt... The conviction, first of all, was like, no, I'm not going to drink that. But then I also felt like, oh, I'm saying no to it. Like, I should take this. It's coming from my dad. But my spiritual eyes were like, no, that's that's the enemy right. in disguise. You know, mm-hmm. he, he wants right. to. And, you know, it, it's just knowing that we're in a, it, the spiritual realm. Yeah. Is, it's real. That's a whole right. different, you know, area that we could talk about. If and you definitely, want. definitely is. Yeah. But to touch on what you were saying before. You know, the word of God says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. free. Mm-hmm. That good. that scripture doesn't say set you free. It says yeah. make, make you, you free. free. There's a difference yeah. between set free and make free. He set you free on the cross. When you know the truth, he makes you free. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like he physically drags you out of a jail cell, mm. breaking you out of the jail cell, dragging you out. He made you free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See that that making you free is is freedom by force. Mm. You understand? So where the devil is keeping you bound, when you know the tree, the 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 truth, it's it's as if you were ripped out of the devil's grasp. Mm. You are free. You are made free by force. Mm. Wow. So when you come to the the understanding of the truth of the word of God. That makes you free. Mm. You are made free. So when you condition your understanding to who you are in Christ, in Christ Jesus, we are seated in Christ Jesus far above the heavenlies. You know, we are hid in Christ. We are one with Christ. Like Jesus said, the the same way, paraphrasing, I'm not going to quote exactly. (laughs) The same way Jesus said, I am in you and you are in me, Mm -hmm. speaking to the Father, he said, they in us and us and in them. Mm -hmm. So that's why in 1 John 4, 17, it says uh, that we we are made one spirit with him. So he literally came in, in the form of power. Like I said before, Mm -hmm. uh, to them that believe gave he power Mm -hmm. to become. So he went in the form of power power and made you himself so we literally become a dimension of christ being his body Mm. yes amen (laughs) that's powerful that's also in the book of john right yes yeah that's that's powerful man we we um we truly want to be mindful about the time it's and uh but we do we really do um thank you for being here amen um i think being here it, yeah, it's 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 mm-hmm. gonna bless many people, yes. and I, I I think you know generations to come are gonna be able to tune in. But I do before we finish this, and and we do have one final question. But before we get to that, I I want to give you the time to to put out a, out there a message to your lineage, to your generations personally, to the kids even unborn yet, as the Bible says. Amen. What can you speak to them, to your family? So just something that you would want for them to keep in their heart, just like a personal message for them? I would have to say there is no way to the Father except by Christ Jesus. Everything. It is not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. Mm -hmm. Our whole life revolves around God around Christ Jesus. He is our life and the power we live by. Mm -hmm. So when we struggle in life, it's because we are not using his ability. Mm -hmm. We're not using his power. So I urge everyone listening to seek 
Christ to build yourself up in your most holy faith, you know, because it is only by the power of God, the literal power of God. I want to say this because this is something that a lot of people have a hard time understanding and many Christians don't experience this. They think that it is by the willpower and, you know, uh, praying for the help of God and that God gives them strength uh, to, to, you know, withstand. The form in which God causes you to withstand is by his power. Now, I'll explain that in a sec. Mm -hmm. When your mind is renewed in the word of God, you are literally, your, your processing changes. The way you think changes. Mm -hmm. The way you see things changes. So where you saw a struggle and where you saw something hard because your mind is renewed in the word of God, you no longer see the same thing as a challenge anymore. Mm -hmm. Because your spirit man has been conditioned and grown to where what you used to struggle to stay away from, mm -hmm. you don't struggle to stay away from because mm -hmm. there's nothing pulling. That's why Jesus mm -hmm. said, the, 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 the God of this world comes to me and finds none of himself in me. Mm -hmm. That's good. So what the enemy has in you, so to speak, is the mindsets. Mm -hmm. And that's what he pulls on mm -hmm. and where we feel like we're struggling. So when that is changed and renewed by the word of God, there's nothing to pull from. Mm -hmm. So it's not a struggle. You are now operating by the strength mm -hmm. of the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And thus the struggle ends in that area of your life. And you continue doing the same thing in every area of your life. Amen. Amen. That is so good. Oh, powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. Glory to Amen. God. Amen. Glory to God. Well, the, the final question that we have is a question found in the Bible. And we, we ask all of our guests. And it's in the book of Matthew. And it says that when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his, his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And some said, John the Baptist... Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But then Jesus looked at them and said, no, but what about you? Who do you say that the Son of Man is? So I, I feel like Jesus made it personal. He, he just, he was like, yeah, that's what the world says about me. But I want to know what, what you, who do you say that I am? And in the same way, we want to ask you, who do you say that Jesus Christ is personally to you? Myself. Amen. Now, I, I, I say that because, like I said, I referenced the scripture earlier. He that is joined to the Lord has been made one spirit. Yeah. So when Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yes. The Bible mm -hmm. says that he's the head and we are the body. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if I see you, I see the Father. Amen. You understand? Yes, I, I get it. Yes. I see Amen. the Father. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, yeah, that's... So, I, go ahead, go ahead, brother. We we are now the express, as Jesus was on the earth here, we now, as the Bible says, we are living epistles, are the express image of Christ. Mm -hmm. So when people yes. see us, they've seen the Father. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes, I, I truly believe that. And that's beautiful, by the way, that, that you have, that is your, your faith, that is your confidence. You are bold enough. And I love that. And us Amen. as Christians... We understand it, and we're just like, yes, amen, we agree with you. And that's an area where, like, the Jews, they missed it because indeed he, he everything that Jesus Christ said, like, it was for his Father's glory. He always, he said, yeah, the Father is in me. Like, why, why do you want me to show you the Father when you see me? You see right. him. But they miss it. They're like, oh, you're calling yourself God? Right. Oh, like, but they didn't right. get it. Lack of knowledge, understanding. Right. And... In, in, in the again in, in John 15, I'm gonna go back to that because um, this is why he says, like, if, if you remain in me and I remain in you, right? He says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love as I have kept the, the, my Father's commands and remain in his love. So, I always feel like like Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, He's never going to ask us something that that He did not do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. So that's why I feel like it's powerful His Word, and He He truly is our Shepherd. 
Amen. He leads by example, and and part of the the vine and the branches that parable. I I I know why you're saying that. You know, he he is in you, and and you proclaim it. He Amen. is me, yeah. and I think Amen. that is beautiful. And even if people don't understand it, bro, brother, I I. Earlier, we were talking about the woman with the alabaster jar, mm -hmm. where she broke it, she anointed the Lord, and everyone thought she was crazy. What are you doing? Right. You could have used that money for something else, help the poor, right. and this, this, and that. But the Lord looked at them and said, like, like don't judge her. Like, she has done something beautiful for right. me. And I feel, I feel like in the same way, like, I feel it down in my spirit. When the Lord hears you say that, like, he, he is... In here, he, I Amen. am he. That he's like, that's right. He yeah. is in you. Amen. So that is so awesome. Mm -hmm. We want to be mindful, um, and we like to be intentional with this podcast, and Amen. and 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 for the listeners to give them an opportunity to receive Christ. So Amen. for those that haven't yet received them, go ahead, Michelle. Yes. So before this, um, I do want to share with you guys, like, ask what. Will was sharing today, if it has touched your heart and, you know, it has like a revelation occurred and you want that relationship with God, you want to repent and start a, something new with okay. God. Um, I would encourage you, the only thing that we can do, it's just guide you and lead you and you would have to declare it, but then you have to also believe it in your heart. So in Romans 10, 9, 10, it says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. So I'm going to say a prayer and then you just follow and we'll go from there. Okay. Yes. Amen. All right. Lord Jesus, I declare you with my mouth that you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you that God raised you from the dead. And you live forevermore. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I declare victory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brother Will, to close out the podcast, we yes, want to sir. ask you if, if, if you could go ahead and please pray for the listeners. Um, we like to be intentional with prayer, amen. just like in church, when people come up to the altars and, yes, and they, they ask, what can we pray for? Because we want to come in agreement. Amen. And you know, if you could just pray for for the for the younger generations, Amen. for those that are saying, "Hey, Will, you know, thanks for sharing your testimony, but no thanks, I, I I think I'm still not ready." If you could just pray for them, so so they could really understand that God is calling them, that Amen. God wants to embrace them and bring them to the to to the Lord. Amen. Which camera do I face? Awesome. Amen. So. In the name of Jesus, Father, we come before you humbly, exalting Jesus Christ, as he is the center of this podcast and the reason why we come together. Yes. Lord God, I ask you, Lord God, and I present every listener right now under the sound of my voice, that you give them strength, my God, that you quicken them in their inner man and give them strength for those that are not saved, my Lord, and are wondering if they should make this decision, Lord God. I ask you, Lord God, that you speak to their hearts right now to make that decision because the time is near and yes, the evidences Lord. are all around us now. Yes. Hallelujah, my Lord yes. Jesus. The evidences are all around us. The proofs of your coming is already here. There's so many prophecies in your word that have already come to pass yes. and that are undeniable and cannot be ignored, my Lord. So I ask you to put urgency in the heart of those youth, those young people, yes, and Lord. everyone else that is wondering and questioning whether or not they should receive their salvation as the time is nearing. And I ask you, Lord God, give grace to those, hallelujah, that are renewing themselves now or desire to renew themselves, renew their covenant with you, yes. that fell off and lost it and slacked, that they could come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy because you are a merciful God. And I ask you, Lord God, to give strength to the weary, my Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Yes. 
I decree and declare that the strongholds that are holding them back from salvation be broken now. The grasp of the enemy on the, on the mind is removed now in the name of Jesus. That power, yes. that stronghold, that questioning is removed now in the name of Jesus. I speak to those right now in the name of Jesus that are struggling in the name of Jesus, be strengthened with might by, your, by the Spirit of the Lord in your inner man. In the name of Jesus, receive that strength right now in the name of Jesus. Every situation, every closed door in the name of Jesus that is producing a hindrance that is stopping you from being able to walk out your walk with Christ. Every, every situation, every circumstance, every person, every single demonic entity that is being used right now to hold you back and to bind your life. We decree and declare that those situations change. Those people leave your life now in the name of Jesus. Sometimes there needs to be a severing of people that are around you. And sometimes you're in a position where you can't do it. But the Lord is gracious and merciful. So in the name of Jesus, we come in agreement with the prayers of your heart right now that the ties be severed now in the name of Jesus. The relationships that need to break and be removed, be removed now. The relationships of destiny helpers that need to come into your lives, come into your lives now in the name of Jesus. We speak by the Spirit and call forth your destiny helpers to help you where you are struggling. As in the Bible, there are many people that required the assistance and needed help, just like the widow woman needed help because she was about to make her last meal with her son and die. But God sent the prophet to change that story. And they made it through the famine and they never lacked supernaturally. The oil kept flowing. Provision stayed until the famine was over. So I decree and declare right now by the grace of the Lord that has been placed upon my life that so shall it be for you as well. That in the areas where you are lacking and struggling in that you have your personal famines in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that supernatural provision come to you yes. now in the name of Jesus. Supernatural doors open for you now in the name of Jesus. May the doors in your life that need to be shut be shut now. May the doors that need to be open to advance your life in your destiny and in your call and in your life with Christ be open now in the name of Jesus. And we thank the Lord and we give him all the glory and honor and praise to the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Wow. What a powerful prayer. Yes. Praise Anointed. Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. <laughs> praise the Lord. Wow. Yeah, praise, praise God. Him. All glory to God. And thanks again for tuning in, guys. It's always a pleasure to serve you wherever you may be. And, and Will, Brother Will, it was an honor. Yes. Amen. Truly, truly an honor, an honor to, to serve the Lord alongside you. And that Amen. is exactly what we are doing right now. Uh, although we are not perfect, we choose to say yes to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And and we are in a season where, like you mentioned, um, where you were just like, okay, I'll go out and do it with the little that I know. To be honest, we are in that mm-hmm. position where we're still growing and learning and letting the Holy Spirit fill us up. And but but being alongside a person like yourself, strong in the Spirit, anointed, Amen. bold, and it, it's just an honor to serve yes. the Lord with with people like you, brother. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Say Glory thank to you from God. The, yeah, from the bottom of our hearts, we yes. thank you and. And, you know, for, for the listeners, go ahead and uh, subscribe, like, and leave us a comment. We would love to hear your feedback. If you guys need prayer or anything, we could, uh, we're could we going to put all the information on the bio. Um, yes. Our brother Will, if he, he, he starts his Instagram or something like that, we'll put it on the, infra- <laughs> on the description yeah. and stuff like that. Amen. So you guys can reach out to our brother. And, um, yeah, just, just let us know. We, we would love to hear you guys' feedback. Yes. We want to encourage you to share this with someone who you know who needs to hear the word of God. Like Miguel said, all the information will be there. Partner with us and connect with us by visiting virtualbridge.org. We love you guys. Amen. God bless you.